Hello everybody, so this morning I've uh, been putting up pretty much the last step in the process of framing out this structure and that is the uh, fascia boards on the gable edges of the roof and uh, this is the front side of the building. I've got those done and <clears throat> been working around uh, back here getting those on and I'll throw up some video at the end of me putting on one of the boards. Um, I kind of wanted to show the final product and then uh, I'm going to climb up and uh, point a few things out. Okay, here we are up top and what we're looking at here is the uh, the bottom row uh, purlin on the eave edge and where it meets up with that gable fascia board. You can see under here that's a block, 2x4 block on edge to support the uh, purlin as it overhangs and I've got about a 24 inch overhang here. Pretty generous overhang. And then the fascia board just nails onto that block uh, and purlin at each purlin. Um, and uh, this is mainly a trim board. Uh, there's going to be, once I put up the middle roofing, there's going to be a, it's called a Denver gable trim that goes up over the metal roofing and then down with a little bit of a drip edge here. And this is kind of just a trim board to uh, kind of receive that detail. But um, I like using a fairly hefty piece of one by lumber for these gable fascia boards because they do had a little bit of structure. They, they really tie all these purlins together. And um, almost every time I put one of these up, I find that these purlins are just a little bit out of line and so I'll use a clamp or just squeeze on it to get these lined up and so in that sense this fascia board does add a little bit of structure and in, in, in that it keeps all these the ends of these purlins um, on the same plane. Now uh, all these boards that I use for the the gable fascia these were all leftovers from milling uh, the two by six rafters and usually I end up with an assortment of six inch wide boards that are not quite a two by four uh or not quite a two by of thickness so these are almost always going to be something less than an inch and a half and i throw them aside and hope that i can uh use them for something in this case uh i was able to put them on my planer you can see the inside edge or inside face they're nice and smooth and plane these all down to uh just a very uniform uh one inch thickness and uh, I had enough to make four of those fascia boards without having to mill any new lumber. So, so that was a nice bonus. And this is really the last major step uh, to do on this structure before I start putting up the metal roof. I may come back later and um, put some diagonal braces in a couple more places. Uh, I was surprised as I've been working up on the roof and and everything this is a very rigid structure so I I don't think I need those diagonals but I might put them in there for some extra uh, hurricane uh, uh, uplift and shear resistance but but as, as far as the stuff I need to do this is really uh, the last step and so now that I'm done with this uh, I had a few spots on the structure that started sprouting some mold so I'm gonna spray those with a really weak bleach mixture. I don't like to use anything too strong because it's not good for the fasteners, but uh, I'll do a like a 1% or less uh, bleach spray on anything that's got mold or mildew on it. And it's, it's, it's funny, it's just in, you know, you can see those collar ties up there have some. It's just in, you know, oddball pieces of lumber throughout the structure. I guess they must have got mold spores on them at some point and then uh, we got warm enough and humid enough that they started growing, but I'm gonna spray those down this afternoon, let them dry, and uh, then I'll be begin to put up the metal roofing uh, probably tomorrow. And um, there's a nice trick I like to use to get the metal roofing straight, and I'll make a, a video about that next. Uh, until then, thanks for watching.